I guess we're starting with the show. What a way to start <laughs> off season two, episode one. Uh, Producer Pierre, I thought we were going to kick off with the title, but it's, I guess not. It's all good. Uh, welcome back, everybody, to season two. Uh, host Anthony Bartolo here with Sarah Lean. Sarah, how's it going? I'm good. I'm good. I need to find a new co-host, though, that knows what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. Wow. <laughs> We practiced this. We're supposed to go with the title. I don't know what happened. You went right into the. Is it ah. a new producer we need? To... <laughs> I, I, no comment. No comment. So we're doing things differently in season two, as you can tell. Uh, right out of the gate, uh, we're trying to bring in a little bit more stability. Um, as we mentioned in the last episode in 2020, um, Microsoft has put a more of an investment, and they've uh, renewed us for season two. Uh, which is awesome. We're very excited to be moving forward with this. Um, and so the hopes is that we're going to have a lot more stability on the show. We got, we, there was much more of an investment in terms of equipment to get this all done. Uh, and so having this all together makes it more available for everybody here to watch uh, and interact with. And we hope that everybody's also chatting in the chat stream. The first thing I wanted to, to, to cover, uh, Sarah, we talked a little bit about this before the show. The Consumer Electronics Show was this week. And, you know, I've spoken at it numerous times before, and this is the first time in the history of the show uh, they had to go all digital because of the pandemic that's going on right now. Uh, it was kind of eerie to see the streets of Las Vegas completely empty um, because last time I was there, there was, I think it was 180,000 people. It would take up to an hour just to get into a cab. Uh, the lines were so long, uh, which I don't miss. But what I do <laughs> miss is the, is the opportunity to connect with a lot of people uh, in regards to innovations, it's you have the big players like the the Asus and the Samsungs and the Dells and Lenovo's uh, and the TV manufacturers like LG and what have you. But then you also had the innovators that were there that were showcasing new product uh, and showcasing you know new abilities and new capabilities, which this year they were still able to do. And what was interesting was Microsoft's involvement into the Consumer Electronics Show. Um, as those you know, those of you who know, uh, Microsoft Ignite and Microsoft Build. Uh, were all moved also to a digital format. And the learnings from that um, was actually shared uh, with the organization that puts on the Consumer Electronics Show. And the show itself came together uh, based on the learnings that we had from the other events that we've done uh, in, the, in the digital space, which was pretty interesting to see the similarities between what we did at Ignite and at Build, and now they're doing on the Consumer Electronics Show. Uh, there was you know, the, the digital events that occurred from each manufacturer sharing out their uh, what they're coming out with for 2021, which was pretty cool. Sarah, was there any like you know interesting announcements that that you saw at CES? Um, I haven't really had a chance to catch up on everything, but I saw some cool announcements from some of the big names like HP and Samsung and Lenovo around new laptops and desktops. So those are still obviously high on the agenda with everybody. Um, and obviously we we've been talking about new devices here at Microsoft as well. We released the Microsoft Surface. Now let me get this right. So Microsoft Surface Pro 7 yep. Plus. <laughs> um, and I think it's more aimed towards the business market, but it is going to be available to uh, consumers on the retail stores as well. Um, and it's seeing some upgrades. So it's got new new, new um, CPU and stuff like that. I think it's 11th gen we're on now. Um, and also it's got a removable um, SSD, much like our Surface Pro X, if I'm getting the names right. Um, so you can remove all that sensitive data. And it's also great for IT departments if they're having to um, fix these kind of devices in, in that kind of department as well. And I think we also announced that we're going to um, actually start shipping our Surface Hub um, 2S. So that's yep. the big 85-inch kind of whiteboard, um, which hopefully we'll all get to use in conference rooms soon when we get back together again. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be spending the weekend catching up about at CES and stuff that happened as well. What about yourself? Has there anything caught your eye? Oh, a lot of use. Uh, the, the Surface Pro uh, that you may mention of the enterprise version caught my eye too because it has the removable uh, storage, which is really yeah. cool. And it's you know something on a Surface Pro that would be so awesome. You have it, you know, run into an issue. Now you can just remove the the, the storage, put it into your new device, and away you go. Uh, taking you know, taking it back a little bit, the last time I was um, speaking at the show, actually no, not the last time. I think it's the second time I, was, I spoke at CES was the last time that Microsoft had a keynote uh, and the keynote was was delivered by Bill Gates. 
uh, and it had uh, a Big Bird and Sesame Street when they were promoting the Xbox 360 Sesame Street World. That was the last keynote that they had at Microsoft. I found it so interesting that the first keynote back at CES, because Microsoft has been involved in, C, involved in CES in the, in the background, um, meeting with customers directly, but now they actually had a keynote with Brad Smith uh, and Panos Panay. Um, it was so interesting, the difference from what it was back then when it was that, hey, Big Bird's here and we're talking about Xbox 360 and how it's retail you know, focus. And to now Brad Smith walking through the data center and showing the architecture behind the technology that runs a lot of Azure services. What an interesting paradigm, interesting change in terms of even the way that we approach uh, how customers adopt in, in, in terms of services. For me, um, being a devices guy, the big thing for me was yesterday's announcement of the new Galaxy S21. Uh, a lot of talk uh, around the whole, uh, you know, no more uh, headphones and charger in the box, just the cable and the phone. A lot of the manufacturers you're starting to see move to this direction. And you know what? There's there's two sides of the coin on that. A lot of people are complaining, say, "Well, great, you're removing these from the boxes, but the the, the phone itself is is not any cheaper." Uh, I have the drawer that I open up, and I have a plethora of chargers, a plethora <laughs> of cables, un you know, still wrapped in its original cases. The the, the headphones that I don't use because I have the custom sets that I want to use for for sound. So it's that whole you know argument of do you add it? Do you not? Uh, I'm still running a, a Galaxy S9 Plus, uh, so definitely looking at the S21. The only thing for me is they removed the the um, removable storage. So on my 9S Plus, I have the um, external S, uh, micro SD card that I can swap out. You can't do that on the S21. Uh, the headphone jack, I'm not worried about. Uh, most of my headphones are wireless now, um, but the the storage is a bit of a challenge for me just because. I looked at my phone and my phone has 64 gig of storage. And then I also have a 512 card in there as well. The 64 gig is full. I think I have two gig left uh, and the card is three quarters full. So yeah, poor management of my storage solution. I got to push more out to the cloud. I get it. Uh, just, it worries me to have, you know, it's that comfort level that I can upgrade the memory as I, as I go. So last piece, of, last piece of this is with the advent of the show happening and Microsoft support of CES. A uh, lot more learned uh, from the show in terms of how to put on digital events. Uh, and what's been interesting is, you know, we're getting a lot of feedback from you, our audience, in terms of what you would like to see in future in the way that events happen and events occur. So with that being said, you probably heard of an announcement that we were talking about in terms of an upcoming event that our team itself is specifically going to be covering. And we're going to share, we're going to shape, we're going to save that. Well, can't get that word out. We're going to save that. Uh, for the events, events portion of the show to talk a little bit more about it. Uh, so stay tuned for that uh, later on in the show. Uh, so with regards to the news, Sarah, we'll get started. You're up first. Awesome. So first bit of news I want to share is something that probably has went under the radar this week because it, it kind of comes across as a small bit of news, but I know it'll be useful to a lot of people. Um, and we're now allowing people or the ability is there for you to upgrade your public IP address from one SKU to another. So if you have it deployed as a basic SKU, you can now upgrade it to a standard SKU. And going alongside that, um, your load balancer can do the same. So if you've deployed a load balancer as basic, then you can also upgrade that to standard. And that's an important one because they are linked together. You can't have a basic IP address attached to a standard load balancer. And that's probably around some of the differences so if you think about uh, basic, it's a bit of a basic um, kind of deployment. Um, it's open to the internet. It's not not necessarily secure out the, the box. You have to kind of add your own layer of security on it. Whereas the standard SKUs are locked down in a zero kind of trust um, environment. So yeah, you definitely don't want your basic SKU attached at the front for your IP address to your 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 kind of zero trust load balancer. So um, yeah, that's a small bit of news around this week. Again, it's probably going to be very useful to uh, people who are deploying maybe test environments, proof of concepts, and then want to upgrade into a standard environment when they put it into production. So um, yeah, one to check out as well. It's, it's small but mighty news because prior to, what would be the process if you needed to upgrade? Um, I think it would have been a delete and start again. Um, right. So no one wants to do that. <laughs> right. So, so, you know, and that's the thing, it may have been small and been under the radar, but it's something where, you know, those that use the service currently have been asking for it for some time now. Uh, and now, now that it's made available, it makes people so much lives lives so much easier because now you just do the upgrade on the fly. 
uh, and you don't have to delete and start over again in terms of the architecture, which is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So let's continue on. Uh, next up is announcement from Alex Simons and team in regards to the email one-time passcode authentication. It's the availability now to send out an email to someone else outside of your organization to allow for collaboration on documents, on presentations, on a, uh, on a directory, uh, and have the, uh, the ability without the individual actually being belonging to uh, an Azure AD implementation. This is the biggest you know, bane of a lot of IT professionals' lives is that setting up of all these guest accounts, setting up of, of all, all these um, um, accounts for people outside of your organization, uh, it could be, you know, third party partners that are working on a project with you uh, and you're setting up these guest accounts that IT has to keep manage of all of these accounts. Now, all that has to happen is an email can be sent out uh, and it allows this individual an allotted amount of time that's set uh, by, by the individual that's sending out the invitation in terms of collaboration with uh, on a specific document, whatever that may be. Uh, what's interesting is it, it's self-service. So this is, uh, I'm the project manager. I've been given the rights by my organization to allow for this ability to send out an email to the partner that's uh, collaborating with me on this project. Uh, I'll set the timeline in terms of how long this individual has access to this resource, even though they're outside my organization. IT doesn't have to set up guest accounts anymore. It doesn't have to worry about resetting passwords or worrying about shutting down those guest accounts when the projects are done, because that's all controlled by this individual uh, who's Give, been given the permission to enable this functionality. Uh, this includes, you know, not just only Microsoft Federation, but also Google Federation as well uh, for access to um, the, the implementations. So that means the individual you're sending the email to doesn't even require a Microsoft account, uh, as long as it's, it's either Microsoft or Google Federation uh, capable on the project itself. This is So this is big. This is, again, based on the current situation that we're in right now worldwide uh, for our, our need to collaborate while we are all working from home for the most part. Uh, it's something where it's an enablement that goes forward and ensures that we're staying secure uh, in terms of the data and what's being actually shared, um, but doing so in a, a lot less friction, a lot less uh, requirements from IT professionals without relinquishing any of the security aspects required for a lot of the implementations. Now, for IT professionals looking at this solution, do you keep in mind that you have to prove or you have to ensure that this would fall under your ISO standard requirements? Uh, because in some instances, this may not fly uh, because of certain re regulatory requirements. Do your research, you know, start looking at this and, and participate in the labs. And we've shared out the, the uh, doc on docs.microsoft.com that details the entire implementation of the solution. Make sure that this fits within your uh, required um, adherement to ISO standards, it, should you have any, uh, before implementing this type of solution. Sarah, sounds what do you neat. think? Yeah, sounds neat. Um, hopefully, it will reduce um, the amount of teams or whatever that I'm I'm part of, <laughs> 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 and having to switch between to try and collaborate on a document or something. So, yeah. I look forward to seeing people starting to use that and see if it actually does help them, um, and it is what they they want um, as, as well. So, sounds good. So Sarah, you're up next. Yes. So um, the Azure Security team launched um, this Azure Security um, Center Labs. Um, it's on GitHub. Um, and basically what it uh, does is allow you to get some hands-on um, practical experience with Azure Security Center. Now, it assumes that you either have access to Azure Security Center. Hopefully, you're not going to work through this lab within your production environment, but you have like a trial subscription set up and you have enabled the, the Azure Security Center trial for 30 days there. Um, and there's beginner level um, scenarios. So you can start to configure things and have a look at them working through these kind of step-by-step guides. Um, but if you're more advanced in using this and want to have, again, hands-on practice with something, then the labs also cover the, the level 300 and level 400 scenarios as well. So definitely something I'm looking forward to having a play at. Um, and obviously, with it being on GitHub, I imagine the team will be more than happy to take suggestions um, because it's open source with GitHub. You can just clone, clone that repo and have a go. Um, again, if you have any issues, feedback to the team, please use um, the kind of issues tab, I think, in GitHub to help them build on this. Um, sounds pretty cool. I, like I said, I, I want to spend some time having a look at it, but certainly it looks like an interesting way to get hands on. And it's the people that have made the product have actually made these labs. So hopefully it makes sense and it's comprehensive um, and helps you. But yeah, if anybody's tried it out, please let us know how, you, how you've gone with it, if there's something you're missing um, and give the, the team some feedback. But 
definitely another way to learn and, and practice maybe for that AZ500 exam that everybody kind of hovers around and I've hovered around trying to do, but not quite done it. <laughs> Oh, and I love this. I love, you know, uh, this is how I learn. I learn through hands-on. Uh, I love the fact that, you know, the team has, has set this up uh, so that you can actually walk through labs and walk through scenarios. That, for me, like, I I, I struggle learning through the video and, and the mm -hmm. text. I, I learn through osmosis, learn by doing. So the fact that they've created these labs is awesome. In regards to the lab setup, is there a, an account required? And how, how about those that don't currently have an Azure account? How do they participate? Um, I leave, you can sign up for a free kind of Azure account. You don't have to pay for anything and then enable the Azure um, Security Center subscription, which gets you 30 days free trial. Um, so I'm not um, sure if you have to, you know, spin up a virtual machine and that might cost you something. Again, it would depend on what you're doing within that free account. But we have free tiers. We have free accounts. You can sign up if you've never used Azure before. Um, so definitely try and leverage them again because you're just doing um, some scenarios in here. If you have to spin up a virtual machine, it could be a really small virtual machine. It could be one of those free tiers that we offer. Um, so, yeah, you could probably hopefully do this um, within no budget. <laughs> um, but again, it shouldn't be too much onerous given that the guys have looked at using the trial. And again, if you do it within the 30 days, then you should be able to do it um, and have some great hands-on experience. Um, but yeah, again, if anybody's tried this and it's cost them a lot of money, please do give us that kind of feedback because again, the team don't want you to be out of pocket necessarily right. if you're working through a lab experience. So all feedback, always welcomed as well. So I did. I think I did read that you know you should be able to do the entire lab within the free trial. Um, it provides you the, the team that produced the, the labs themselves were uh, very mindful to to ensure that they, you you wouldn't go over uh, the allotted credit that you would be made available to your free trial. Uh, do confirm, and we've uh, provided the information on itopstock.com with the latest AZ update post uh, to confirm. Uh, but there's, you know, always a good thing to, to invest in oneself in regards to your upskilling and your certification. And if you're passionate about it, you know, this, it's something where you're going to go forward and do it in such a uh, tremendous resource. Uh, if you're looking to upskill in security and some, something of interest, I'm definitely going to dive into it as well. Um, after everything that's going on this month, we're so busy. Uh, but after this month, we're definitely going to be checking this out, which is really cool. Because uh, I do uh, as well want to do my AZ500 certification, which is cool. Uh, let's continue on with the news. And on that same uh, security uh, vein, uh, the Microsoft 365 team have created a simulator uh, for the possible attacks that could occur in your Office 365 implementation. This one is huge. Uh, now we're going beyond just learning the uh, ways of, of strengthening your security uh, using Security Center. Now we're looking at what happens when an attack occurs? What are the you know, steps of action that you should take? Uh, and so this simulator actually runs you through an attack that could occur in your implementation of Office 365 and provides you the steps in terms of what to look for or what reports to set up or what notifications you should be you know, taking uh, into consideration when an attack occurs. This is something where based on the learnings and research and all the attacks that have uh, occurred worldwide, uh, the Microsoft research team has captured all that information and have produced a simulator to simulate that actual instance. So it makes you know, uh, IT organizations uh, more prepared when an attack occurs. You know, it's great that we have, you know, the labs that offer you the hands-on training in terms of how to use the tools. But this takes it one step further to say, hey, this is what an attack looks like for those that, you know, may have not seen an attack occur before, have not seen one at a, at a scale that uh, large or small, whatever that may be, uh, that actually have the physical attack occur in a simulated format. It's it's like a fire drill, and you're going through the whole exercise of the attack occurring. How do you address it? What things to look for in terms of notification? What is your best course of action in terms of notifying the people that you support uh, for the uh, your implementation of Office 365? What cues to look for when the attack occurs? Uh, this is such a powerful tool. And for individuals like myself that, you know, like I said, learn hands-on the best, uh, what a great way to really go through uh, what would happen when an attack should occur at your implementation. Oh, yeah, that's, that's pretty awesome. Because how many times have you had to set up alerts um, assuming the attack and you know if we got attacked it would hit this alert and then that alert will ping an email to us this way you can kind of work through the scenario and be sure that you know where the attack is actually going to alert and then you set that up in your production environment so 
that sounds very useful. Um, and I think the MC365 team also have a security exam. I want to say it's MS500. That's kind of what I think the code is. <laughs> um, but I imagine doing this kind of scenario will help with that exam as well. So sounds pretty cool. Yeah, and that's the thing, right? Like I said, hands-on for me is, is a big deal. Uh, video's phenomenal for introduction, and so is, you know, reading of, you know, Microsoft Learn modules, but I love the modules that have the hands-on. And so the fact that they actually have the simulation of an attack occur and it's, and it's an actual lab that you run through, uh, I, I can't wait to sink my teeth into that one as well. Um, you know, and, and I'm thinking that not only for the MS500 certification, but even for the Azure certification as well for security, uh, it would provide you those insights in terms of what to look for, what to, you know, yep. When you're when you're doing your study, what you should be looking at in terms of your security, your all all encompassing security picture. Yeah, because M three six five and Azure kind of link together if you're kind of doing the implementations right. right. So there will be some crossover with security and attacks and stuff like that. So yeah, you're absolutely right. It's it's beneficial to have a look at that as well. So let's look in the chat room really quickly before we jump on to the events. Uh, so we'd like to say hello to Rabbit Junior, Paul Jensen. Uh, we have Wes McDonald online, Stephen Inns. Uh, we have Andrew McCollum and Jared Shockley. Looks like producer Steve is here. Uh, I do know that Patch and Switch are on today. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and we have Wire Connect is in there as well. Producer Pierre, you're supposed to be producing the show. He's on the chat room. <laughs> <laughs> Just calling him out there. So a lot of you on the chat room talking about uh, everything that we're talking about right now. Uh, a lot of interest in terms of what's happening with Dell uh, that was announced at CES. Uh, there's a lot of talk about the uh, produce uh, the production Azure Data Center that Brad walked through at CES as well. So a lot of chatter about CES that's, that's going on here, and then talk of the free re resources that we talked about. Uh, jumping over to events, as mentioned, uh, it is Friday and it is a fortnight, so Patch and Switch will be online. Uh, so their their show will come up at noon Eastern time today. Uh, also for events, we have the all around Azure. A developer's guide to IoT. I'm actually going to say a professional's guide to IoT because I'm actually speaking on uh, the session as well. <laughs> I have session number one. I'm definitely not a developer, uh, but I'll be walking through the architecture of IoT and uh, what uh, organizations should look for in terms of architecting your solution in IoT and what design considerations you should have when building out your solution. So definitely check that out. That's actually on the 19th. Uh, and we actually have time zones for Asia, Pacific, uh, Europe and Africa and the Americas that are all being covered. Um, and then there's the big one. And, you know, this one has been something where uh, it's been interesting because this is being built based on the feedback that everybody has been providing us in terms of their existing experience with attending events from home. It's been a big shift. It's big, been a big change. And it's been, you know, very awesome to experience this with everybody in terms of how we're now sharing information you know sarah you know correct me if i'm wrong having the hallway conversations with people was a big deal uh for me for everybody because that's how i learn how people are struggling with adoption of services what ideas people have to make things better um you know it was something that was was really uh, influential to me in terms of my career and where, where we look at in, uh, to better services that microsoft has to offer and the whole event piece, then we started with the first Ignite, went to a digital format and having all the keynotes and all the sessions and made via video uh, during scheduled times uh, was great. But a lot of people said, well, you know, it doesn't work for me because I'm in this time zone or, you know, this is the time that I'm, I plan to spend with my family. You know, it, it became a, a bit of a challenge. So the big thing with this event that our team is putting on is all the content is going to be made available at the day of launch. So that's a big deal, right? This is this is not going to be a, you're going to sit and watch this live stream. This is going to be on the 2nd of February, all the content is going to be made available. And the, the, the topic that we're talking about is all things hybrid, uh, which we're not going to go too deep in right now because there's going to be more information coming in. And that's the other thing too. The way that we're sharing this information has been a slow share. We, we've done that purposely just, you know, because we want everybody to be as excited as we are in putting this event on. It, for us, this is a big deal because this is based on what you've told us you want to see. This is based on you know you, the way that you want to experience the information that's being shared. Uh, do keep in touch with the IT Ops Talk 
Com blog uh, because there will be further announcements that will be coming out. I know there'll be another uh, blog post next week that'll be talking more about this event. Uh, but even on, on social media, I've been blown away uh, by the interaction that we've had with our with everybody uh, in regards to you know just the crossword puzzles or the ASCII art or you know um, you know we we're talking prior to the show in terms of the crossword puzzle and people trying to figure out the answers and what does this clue mean and, and it's so awesome just to see the community come together and really interact with one one another. Sarah, what, what's been your take? I want to know if anyone has actually solved that crossword puzzle yet. <laughs> because <laughs> we've been teasing it out and I don't know if anyone solved it. If you have, make sure you either give us a shout out right now or um, tweet us with the hashtag EZOps, um, otherwise we'll have missed it. So yeah, there's no prizes, unfortunately, but you'll get kudos <laughs> and, you know. <laughs> oh, you definitely um, we were hoping, so, so there's been a couple submissions. I, I'm going to have to check into that. We'll announce, you know, who came out with it first next week or we're hoping to have it for this show, um, but it's fine. It, it, it's it's again, it's an interesting just to see the interaction and how people are chatting. And you know, we started with the something simple with the ASCII submarine. Uh, for those of you who don't know, that the reason why we went the submarine theme is is because submarines dive deep, uh, and we're looking to do the same with the content that we'll be sharing. And it's been interesting just to see why are you, why are you sharing what why are you sharing this stuff? And it's been you know, you you watch this unfold and you watch people get excited and and it's more interaction and more conversation you know that, that, that's been occurring uh producer pierre has been very busy in the back end uh building out a solution on discord uh for the ability for interaction so to have those hallway conversations in in a, in a building as as we would have in a convention center uh to to have them available to have the ability to to talk about what's being showcased and what's being shared it, it's something where we've been very mindful to capture a lot of the things that we've learned in putting on Ignite and putting on Build. And by all means, it's not going to be as big uh, as those type of events because we're a small team of eight uh, <laughs> as opposed to the big production that puts on Ignite. But we're very excited to get this to get this going. Yeah, we've definitely got big plans. If it's not going to be a big event, we have big plans and big aspirations. So, um, exactly. yeah, we're, <laughs> we're looking forward to it. Um, but, yeah. Pierre's kind of shouting in the background that we've got like three minutes Four left, minutes. Anthony. I know, I know, and we don't want to get cut off on Learn TV. So, <laughs> last but not least, the Microsoft Learn module of the week uh, with our security theme that we're going on today. Uh, we're looking at the defend against threats with Microsoft Threat Protection uh, made available, Microsoft Defender, uh, Microsoft Threat Protection. This is a great learning path, so it incorporates a whole bunch of modules that are available in regards to how are you assessing your threats that occur at your organization? Uh, we've attached this again as a link on to the AZ update blog post on itopsoc.com. Definitely check it out if you have a chance to go through it uh, and digest the information that's made available. Sarah, I can't believe how fast the show has gone today. <laughs> Fastest half an hour of the day. <laughs> always, but it's always the most fun. I, I have such a great time putting on this show. It's the highlight of my week, I'll be honest, right? In terms of what we do. Uh, because we get to interact with everybody. So thank yeah. you, everybody in the chat room that's on there. Uh, Sarah, oh, and by the way, it is Sarah's three-year anniversary here at Microsoft, and we're so awesome, to, uh, so privileged to have her on board. It's so awesome to, to work thank with her you. every day. Sarah, if people want to get a hold of you, how do they get a hold of you? Yep, you can find me as Techie Lass on Twitter, or you can find me blogging on itopstalk.com. And if you want to get a hold of Producer Pierre, you can find Producer Pierre at Wired Canuck. Uh, he's usually on Twitter and on the Discord server as well. Uh, look at the ITOpsTalk, sorry, ITOpsTalk.com blog post in future that we'll be sharing out in regards to uh, the, the URLs that we will have for the event specifically for uh, the upcoming event that we're be launching on, on uh, Discord. And if you want to get a hold of me for some reason, you can find me on Twitter at Wireless Life. And I also produce content for at, uh, sorry, for ITOpsTalk.com as well. Uh, wow, is we have to practice more. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you go through Christmas break and not do any shows. You just start stumbling on your own words, which is awesome. All right, and that's time for us. Thank you all for joining us. We will see you next Friday. Have a great weekend, everybody. See you later. <laughs>